Well, we are with Jan McNeilan, and we are going to be talking, Jan, about some of the things that are actually happening in our gardens right now. And there's, there's really some odd selections of things that are going on right now. Sure. I noticed the other day that um, on a Rosa Glocka, we have a, oh, a, yeah. a rose gall. And what they do is it's a mite, and they make little mite condos right, <laughs> uh, right on the plant. And it doesn't hurt anything. It's just an oddity. If you don't like it, cut it off. Um, otherwise, I just think it's kind of a nifty thing to look at. And too, you know, I've seen them on all. It happens on all, in any kind of rose too, doesn't it? Right, so it's and, not just and gall mites can happen on other types of plants as well. This just happens to be a rose. So if you like it, leave it on. If not, just snip it off. Yeah. Everything's good right, with the rose. Right, right. They're not going to hurt the plant at okay. all. And what else you got? Well, um, Indian meal moth is a pretty um, pesky critter at this time of year in the kitchen, in, in our garage, because I store peanuts for the squirrels and sure. bird seed and things like that. It'll happen with cat food, dog food, pantry items, um, flowers, every, all, cereals, all sorts of stuff. And so you can, um, there's a, a really nice uh, trap that you can get. Um, Terrabor is one. I'm not advertising anybody. Right. Uh, Black Flag is another one uh, that you can get. It's a sticky trap that has the pheromone in it uh, that attracts the male moth. Okay. And so um, this is, let's see, there's, a, there's one in here. And it comes with a little pheromone pack, so you open that up and you put it on the sticky side inside the trap. And just put it out wherever, it, wherever you are. As you can see, it works. Right. right. I'm still working on it. It was really, really bad. I had some bird seed in the garage, and now I am uh, so almost go, have it under control. They will get into those things and lay larvae then? Is that yeah, what happens? Yeah, then the larvae okay. come, then you got the whole cycle going over and over again. But that really works very well. It's a non-toxic, completely uh, natural easy thing to, to do. Use too. Good. Sounds great. The other thing we have is blossom end rot. It's something uh, that comes up a lot where you have, and I don't have an example of it this time, it happens a lot on Roma tomatoes where the end of the tomato is black. Right. Flat black, and it can happen on any kind of tomato. Um, it's a lack of calcium, it, and when you plant your tomatoes, plant, plant it with some calcium in the planting hole. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you don't water consistently, if you ha if you're erratic with your water, it won't take um, the plant won't take up the calcium because it's not okay. using the water. Because you have to have that flow of the you system working. Have to have the water the to water. bring the okay. calcium in, so you can have calcium in the soil and still have blossom end rot. Right, right. Uh, so consistency of water. When you fertilize, make sure it's not high nitrogen fertilizer. That it's like five ten ten or ten twenty twenty, something that's lower in nitrogen higher in phosphorus. Because you're not looking for the plant just to get huge. No, you'll get a huge plant and no tomatoes. Right. Maybe some flowers. So. And then what happens once you get it? Is, do you just throw that tomato away then? No. Okay. You can just cut the black part off and the rest is so fine. So it's still a good fruit. You Absolutely. just have to clear off. But kind of yeah. like, you know, apples that have a scab on them. You can right. cut those well, off and so Sure. Well, or, okay. yeah. or peel it. Whatever, right. Whatever right. works. All right. That makes sense. So you still can use, use them with blossom end rot. So it it's really common, and, and make sure that your soil pH is about 6.5 for when you're growing tomatoes and other uh, vegetable crops. And for goodness sake, if you get it, stop punishing yourself, because it, like you said, it happens to a lot of, of tomatoes. Right, and the other thing is, too, keep track and find out which tomatoes have it. Sometimes it's varietal, too, right. so this variety gets it more than another one. Like the Romas tend to get them a lot. Yeah, this for is, me. For all me. right, what else do we got? Um, the last thing is uh, lemons on our lemon tree. You have lemons, Jan. You, I you're do. miraculous. I, it, finally, we have lemons. You guys have been watching us month by month keep track of this. Now it's a great big lemon tree. <laughs> and I have to tell you, they're all fake. But we thought it'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> to make sure you knew that there could be lemons. There could be because it is it's a lemon tree. It's not blooming yet. It looks like there might be one blossom one coming right, right there. <laughs> so we'll 
We'll see. But in the meantime, of course, these will rot before that. But there you have it. <laughs> there you have it. There's there you those have lemons. It. There's that lemon well, tree. Well, Jan, it is always, it's always, you're so informative, informative, and it's always fun to come out here and get the information for what we can be looking for at this time in our own gardens. Thank you so much. And we'll okay. do this again one more time this October. year, probably, or yeah. maybe twice even. Yeah, all right. Can do.